Hi, this is Greg Medor with The Oily Crafter and my wife Judy is running the camera today. So today we'll be talking about 3D printers. We were looking to try and build jigs for our F1 and for other lasers that we use for our crafting business. And we decided that a 3D printer might be a good, uh, good option to help us to uh, build those jigs. And so we, I looked at several different laser printers. I wanted one that had an enclosed cabinet uh, so that I could run filaments other than just PLA. And in order to do that, you have to have a closed cabinet. Now, some of those do require uh, fume extraction, kind of like on your laser, you need a fume extractor. So just want you to be sure and research that. Uh, I looked at several different models and I finally came down to two, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the Creality uh, K1 Max. And I compared those and the K1 Max does have a larger build volume inside, but there were several, after watching several hours of videos on YouTube, um, I came to the determination we wanted to buy a Bamboo Lab. Uh, X1 Carbon. So we had some uh, friends that uh, had one of those and we got a referral code from them to help support them. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're gonna, I'm gonna unbox the unit and tell you, uh, show you kind of what the pieces and components of what we got. We did buy the combo kit and then we bought some additional parts that are uh, additional filament, and some additional parts that we thought might be useful for us. Uh, so the things that come with the combo kit that we ordered are the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the AMS, which is the Automated Material System. There's a build plate, um, and it's a random, uh, compatible with the Micro LiDAR. There's Bamboo Filament Supplies, random color and type, contains three spools. Then you have a build plate, a hot end with a hardened steel nozzle, 0.4 millimeters, bamboo bus cable, four pin, bamboo bus cable, six pin, filament cutter, retaining clip, and hot end screws, a couple of hex keys, a 1.5 and a 2.0, lubricant grease, bamboo scraper, spool holder, spare screws for the extruder, unclogged tool for the nozzle, uh, some thermal grease, nozzle wiper, and some uh, double-sided tape to help hold things together. So with that, uh, let's uh, get started on uh, pulling material out of the box and we'll see, uh, we'll go from there. So I already cut the tape here so I wouldn't be fumbling with the tape while we're, while we're filming on the video here. As you can see, They've got a lot of packaging around this around this unit here. We've got styrofoam to help it. We did have a little bit of damage on the box, but I'm hoping, based upon the packing material, I'm hoping that that won't have affected our 3D printer in any way. As I recall, this is rather heavy and large, so we may have to uh, stop the camera here and uh, have my wife help me get this out of the uh, box here. So what we decided to do was probably safest to lay it down on its side to pull it out of the box. So we managed to get it out of the box and I uh, got it up here on the table. It is, there is some weight to it. So you want to be sure and, and very cautiously um, take it out of the box. And when you move it around, I would suggest uh, finding a place to where you want it to be set up all the time and not be moving around a lot. Um, doesn't mean it's not portable, doesn't mean you can't move it. I would just suggest that uh, we ordered some anti-vibration feet uh, to help with the vibration of the printer because uh, as some people have pointed out, vibration in the actual printer, if it's not on a stable surface, um, it can actually cause the uh, first layer of the print to fail. And so, um, so you want to do everything you can to make sure it's on a good solid surface and you've got some anti-vibration feet. So I'm going to pull this plastic off and we'll come back to it. All right, so we've got the plastic cover off of there. Uh, again, I would suggest having a couple of people 
to uh, do that and make sure that you're supporting your unit while you're uh, pulling it out of the plastic. As you can see, they've got, they had tape on, on here to help protect the lid. So we're just gonna peel that off. Got some sticky feet here for something. Hmm, interesting. But that's your, that's a glass top. By the way, this is a glass top. It's not plastic. Uh, some of the other units that they have, they have like a, I believe it's a P1P um, that has a plastic cabinet. And um, but I decided I wanted a bamboo lab. There are some, there are the X1 Carbon. There are a lot of people that say, hey, if you want one where you can, you can pull it out of the box, get it set up and start printing, um, that is, that's the one to uh, get and you'll have uh, fewer problems with that. So, as you can see the glass front, they've got, uh, got it taped and well secured here. I, I saw a video where a guy, <laughs> guy on a, on a 3D printer, he was doing an unboxing and he opened it up and the door swung open and it cracked, completely crashed and just completely shattered his door. So I'm trying to be cautious here and make sure that I don't, uh, that I don't have the same issue he did. By the way, that was not a Bamboo Lab printer that uh, had that issue. They're bound to turn and they're going to make sure that this does not, uh, that that door is well protected. Hmm. As you can see, that's, that's a, got that glass door well protected, make sure it didn't have scrack, uh, cracks, scratches, etc. So I'm going to take this lid off now and we're going to pull the AMS system out of there. Again, it got a lot of really good packaging, making sure that nothing inside here uh, shifts while it's in shipment. Wow. That's the AMS system. Right now, I'm trying to get this uh, packaging out of here without completely destroying it. Put that in there. And then this is the AMS system. And they call it AMS system because actual spools from Bamboo Lab, they actually have an RFID tag on them. Oh, it's hooked into the, down here, so I can't, I've got to find the, the wrench. There's a, there's a hex screw right here and right here that holds this AMS system in, so it's not going anywhere. So, so in the manual, it definitely, in the quick start guide there that was taped to the top of the lid here, it does say that you're supposed to take these screws out. Um, we're using that uh, hex wrench that was uh, included in the unit. Set that off the side. And then I've got another one right here. And it's the longer of the two yeah. hex deals. Yeah, I think one's a 1.5 millimeter, and I think the other one is is a two millimeter. So, so the one he used was this long one here compared to the little one there. Yeah. All right, so now we're ready to lift this out. So this is the automated material system. Basically, it sits up on top. The spools actually have an RFID chip in the, in the actual spool itself. And, and that tells the machine, sorry, these are all wrapped up. This one here, um, can't tell, 
probably RFID right here. But anyway, the RFID chip tells the system what type of material, what type of filament is actually loaded in this system. All right, we've got a desk kit pack in here. We've got filament. Now nah, we're probably gonna have to lift the table up in order to do that. So go ahead and pull. Wow, that's really wedged in there. Desk kit pack. Now I'll have cardboard here. I'll have to figure out how to. So they've got it. I'm, I'm sure they've done this a time or two here. And so there, it's a matter of just making sure that uh, they protect your equipment and shipment, which I, for one, definitely appreciate that. And they've got it in there so good, it's not being there very cooperative. <laughs> I just moved the gantry out and uh, okay. made it a little bit easier to All move right. that. This, yeah, that's not going anywhere. So I'm going to have to take these additional screws up down there. All right, they're right here. Yep. We, uh... Trying to give you close-ups here so you can see what's going on. That's yeah, not the right one. So apparently this is going to be the smaller of the two yep. tools that he's going to have to use. Let's see if that one works. Yeah, that's... That not working either? Get, I've got to get a light. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to get a light so we can see down in there better. But this has been uh, pretty cool so far. Over here's that's uh, was in the bottom of the box. It came with our. So deal. here here's the LED headlamp. I find this. Try I not find to... this LED headlamp. Yeah. I found this extremely useful to be able to uh, put light in places where I'm looking, but I can't. That way, it doesn't. It. Uh, doesn't cast as much of a shadow. And it may actually be the bigger one of those two. Okay. Let's see I'm here. Trying to get you a view here. Yeah, it is the bigger one of the two. Sorry about that. Told you the wrong thing. It helps to have light. Yeah, it helps to have light. Okay, I think that one's loose. Let me, I'm going to come around here to see. Yeah. Here, I can, I can do this from this side so you right. can see. You can but see you, you see where those, all those orange you're doing? Yeah. You see where all the orange arrows are pointing? That lets you know the screws that you need to remove. That's cool. So they've made it about as simple as they can there. Right. And we've got uh, two more on this side. We do plan on moving this to a uh, more sturdy table than yeah. what we're having on right now to show you guys how to unbox. Yeah, we're just doing this for, for filming purposes. Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that wasn't damage to the build plate. Yeah, we were very pleased with the packing. That uh, Even though we had the gash on the side of the box, yeah. there was no damage to the inside packing at all. This is worse than unboxing the Glowforge, I think, as far as number of things to take yeah. out. I think. Well, but the, I, the Glowforge was pretty well packed, too. It was. Well, they. I'm sure that they did a lot of, you know, they, they don't want these parts moving and jostling around, so they put a lot of packing and stuff in there. And to be honest, I appreciate it because, let's face it, no nobody wants this. Didn't get this one completely loose. Nobody wants There's something here on the front too. It's got a little orange arrow on it. Don't know if that makes a difference. To no, it doesn't. Okay. So now we're lifting that out so we can get down to. Okay. 
Oh, those were the first two that you took out to, to remove the AMS. Yeah. Those ones yeah. that were on the front. There's a side build plate with your slicer settings. Okay. So we got, looks like maybe a screw there. Got yep. an orange tag on each side. Yep. Yep, there's three, okay. Because there's one over here, yep. one back there, and well, one over here. What, what this is, is if, if we don't loosen these, this locks that bed all the way down for shipment. If you don't remove these screws, your bed is not going to raise and lower. Yeah. Okay. He did all the research. I'm I'm learning here along yeah. with you guys. So so bottom line is is this one this one actually starts with the bed raised up here to the head. The head moves moves side to side and on the X Y axis, but the Z axis, is the, the bed is what actually moves. moves. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we we got all the styrofoam in here. We still have to remove, and so yeah. we have to get these screws out first. Yep. In order to move that, I like the way they got that uh, chain-looking thing around the uh, wiring to the print head. I wish uh, somebody else had done that to their unit. <laughs> We're not talking about a 3D printer at this point. <laughs> at least I'm not. Uh, there's All another right. one. Pull so, that one out. I yeah. still got. I still got two, two more, more here. Because yeah. all of these, all of these hold the build plate down. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Well, this is this printer came very highly rated. Let, read a lot of reviews. Watched a lot of YouTube videos. There are a lot of guys that did. Uh, uh, have uh, 3D print farms, and they said they they just absolutely love this printer. The ease of use and setup. Yeah, ease of use and setup. It's pretty cool. Oh. So yeah. that's that's what I'm hoping to be able to learn how to do this, and like he said, make my own jigs for my F1. That's by X Tool, and uh, then I also have a D1, and I have a Glowforge, and I've got uh, ornaments I like to make, and I'm hoping that the these will make backings to my ornaments. That's another thing, not just the jigs that we're wanting to do. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure Greg's got some of his own yeah. projects. I've got planned. several ham radio projects that I need cases for, like Raspberry Pis, uh, mesh-tastic boards, etc. So we will get that all squared away. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> will the plank move at all without... No, I don't. I don't. Huh. May, may, yeah. We may want to stop and read the instructions yeah. before we try to force anything. You Just... want me to RTFM? <laughs> oh, my. All right. Yeah. Let's okay, we're going to stop the recording and go read the book. Just a minute. So the next thing here is this is for the spool holder. It says we're supposed to remove this screw here. That's a really short screw, and it says... Replace it with the screw. Use these screws right here. Show them up close here. Yeah. So this is, they, they're saying this needs to mount right here. And we're going to use these screws. It says four spool holder, so it's very clearly labeled. If I can get this bag apart here. We did have to back up a little bit in the booklet and change course a little bit here. Uh, before we get back to the base plate and getting the styrofoam underneath it, apparently. Yep. That's okay. We'll, uh... Just letting you know. Okay. And that's how... Hang on. I think I've actually got that on upside down. Okay. Although I'm not sure how much it matters, but... It doesn't really say this side up, so. <laughs> oh, there's top. It does say top. Okay. That's what I get for not reading. And just a disclaimer, we are not professionals. This is just a couple of hobbyists having fun with new equipment. So hopefully you enjoy our content. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. for our fumbles and our learning process and that uh, it can be done. So.
So let's see here. Yeah, he's using the long wrench again. What is that called again? It's, it's not a hex wrench. He hex, hex wrench, okay. And well, we're going to put it through there. I was trying to do it from the side. And yeah, it was not a, quite straight on. Yeah, yeah, it was a weird angle. Okay, there's that. Okay. All right, remove the three hex screws with the Allen key H2 to unlock the hot bed. Okay, okay, we did that. So I did that. Then it says, then insert the FPC into the port, which the FPC is that, is this thing right here. This is that the, goes on the front. This is the main control unit. Yeah, I believe it goes on over here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it goes on right here from yeah. the looks of it. So I'm guessing. Let's see here. I'm going to carefully pull that off there. I do not want to crimp that cable there. And then it says, insert the FPC into the port by pressing the terminal as pictured. And then you can see we're talking right in here. And right up here, it shows the cable plugging into the back of the unit. Okay. Oh, there's actually a there's actually a picture on the back of this thing here, where it tells you different steps there. Screen installation tutorial. Connect the terminal. Press the terminal down and insert the cable, and then disconnect. It talks about. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to get a picture of that. Stop filming for now. So the next step on the screen, and you notice there's a QR code. So if you scan the QR code, it'll take you right to the site. Basically what you do is pull this out gently. That plugs in right in here. And then this will snap into place here. And by the way, this writing and stuff up here, that's up at the top. So we're going to take this. And it's going to be really hard for you to try and get that on video. We're trying. We're trying. There we go. Yeah, it snapped. Yeah, it snapped in place. You probably heard it. Yep. And then we put these in there and then slide it like, and you heard it click in. And then this tilts up, tilts down. Cool. For now, I'm gonna leave the protective film on that uh, glass and we'll go from there. Okay, so we moved the printer up in place. Had to move some things around because that AMS unit is gonna sit here on top. That's okay. So we're at the step where I have the uh, Bamboo Handy App uh, the app on my phone is downloaded and it says connect the printer to power which we've done and then we're going to hit english right here on next select the region where you're located north america next and then this is where it wants to uh pick the uh uh do the wi-fi so okay I'm not going to show you the screen while we're doing the Wi-Fi stuff. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> All right, so connect the printer to power, use the Bamboo app, and then under devices, it says bind printer. And I'm typing in the, I've already signed up for an account here. And I'm pretty sure that that's already the account that I've used before. I'm going to say, I agree to terms. Hit sign in. 
Okay, bound to the device, so I need to get the verification code. And I've got two-factor authentication turned on. Sorry, there it is. I'm gonna wait for it to change. I would encourage anybody to uh, set up two-factor authentication uh, for their apps because it makes absolutely sure that uh, try not to shine them directly into yep. the light either, but kind of keep it moving while we're trying to get the Wi-Fi okay. stuff set up. Don't want to. Please scan the QR code on the screen. Okay. We're looking for the QR code. It didn't come up. It did not. Okay, I'm gonna stop no. the video. Yep. So I did have to put in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi the SSID and the passcode. Once I did that, I got to this screen here where I've got a QR code on the screen. So I scanned it inside the, the Bamboo app on the device. It came up and then we're gonna say confirm to bind here. Okay, so now it has our Oily Crafter on there and it shows the device here on the screen. No printers in progress but it it, show, it it has successfully connected the device. So now we're ready to go on to the next phase, which is uh, we'll do some uh, initial calibration here to follow the, follow the on-screen instructions. So they've got a terms and conditions here they want you to agree to. Kindly request to improve everyone's printing. Just hit join. So here's the calibration. Current environment, please ensure that the heat bed is unlocked before starting the calibration. And we went through and we took out that screw, we, that screw, and this screw. All right, I think we are good to go. See, it even shows you here on the screen the screws that it wants you to make sure you've removed. We removed all those, so we're going to hit next. This may take several minutes to calibrate. And you can see it. It's kind of hard to see with the. Uh... Yeah, this is going to take a few minutes, it's so gonna... we're going to stop recording at this time. I'm not going to bore you yeah. with all that. And you can see that it's raising the, the bed up oh, here. There you can. There it is. Yeah. So. Alrighty. Okay. We won't see you in a few minutes. Yeah. All right, so what we're doing now is we're gonna set up the AMS unit and it has a four pin connector here, sorry. One of these goes into the back of the back of the 3D printer and the other goes into the, basically this is the, the feed that feeds a filament into the unit. So we're gonna plug that in and then this is a six pin connector, oops, sorry. And the six pin connector if we look at the diagram, it plugs in the end, and then there's two ports up here on the top. You can plug it into, it shows you can plug it into either one is what it says. So that's what we're doing next. Okay, so what I can tell you is we did a calibration earlier, and I had not connected the AMS unit to the printer. In order to connect the AMS unit, you have to turn the printer off. So when I turn the printer off, Connected up the AMS unit, turned the printer back on. The unit decided that I needed to go through the entire calibration again. So I just suggest and let people know so that make sure if you've got the AMS unit, make sure you've got it connected up before you turn your printer on for the first time to do the calibration. So as you can see here on the screen now, it says calibration is complete and we need to hit next. Okay. Initialization is complete and start printing. Okay, now the one thing I do need to do is I need to load some load some filament. Let's see, that's general. No, oh, there's filament. 
if you'd like to go to the update page. So that, that's where you do the firmware. So right now I'm trying to figure out where I can load the filament at. Oh, filament, here we go. So right here. So we're gonna do the first, first one here. Whoops. I did not. So what I did was I cut this filament at a 45 degree angle. Just a leftover from uh, previous uh, days here. So we're just gonna put that filament right there and we're gonna hit retry. There you go. Okay, it doesn't act like it loaded it correctly. There we go. Oh, there we go. And to push it a little further down in there. Yep, that's it exactly. And as you can see right here, let's try and load the filament. I see the filament coming through the tube back here. And it says PLA on it now. And notice it says shows it's green PLA. Does so it actually know the color? It actually knows the color based cool. on the RFID. So if you pan up here and show in the AMS. That's green. That's green PLA filament. So it actually knows. Okay. Because what it that has is. a chip it, Exactly in there. right. All right. All right. So now if I come back to this, it says I'm supposed to apply a thin layer of glue to the build plate. Okay. That's great. One of the things I'm going to take a ding on bamboo here is, is bamboo and their infinite wisdom said that um, they want you to apply a thin layer of glue, of glue stick to that build plate. Well, guess what? They didn't include glue stick with the printer. Fortunately, I bought two deals of glue stick to go on the, as you can see here, glue stick for bamboo for the build plate. And, and if you, you'll notice, as we, after we calibrated, we took the styrofoam out. We did. And you'll notice right here, right here it says apply a thin layer of glue to the build plate. Okay. So, I don't know how I'm supposed to get in there to do that. But. <laughs> Maybe we were supposed to do that before we calibrated. I don't think so. Okay. That's not what it shows on the step there. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, that's a thin layer. Okay, now we're going to close that. It says press that folder butt icon right there. And then we're going to do the banshee. The little boat. Yeah, and <laughs> we're using green B, uh, PLA, use AMS. Bed leveling, flow calibration, time lapse, and we're going to say print now. And it's preheating the bed, so come up here and. Okay. Yep, yeah, there we go. Yeah, notice how it's already, you can see right in here, the temperature, that's the bed temperature right there. Ah. So I wonder how long it takes it to get to temperature. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. That says it's at 75 C, and then we've got another. We've got another one there. Heat bed preheating, clean nozzle tip, auto bed leveling, calibration extrusion. So there you go. Now the other thing that we really like about this particular printer is, is it has an app on the smartphone that will let you, if you have PLA already loaded, you could be you could be out running errands and somebody calls you or you get an order from a web page. Let's say you've already got the design in the printer, you can from your app tell it to immediately start printing. 
Nice. So, so it hasn't. Yeah, it, it hasn't started printing anything yet. It's it's trying to get all these temperatures up to the up to the right temperature at this point. Okay. I was gonna say the middle one seems to be moving quite nicely yeah, up. Th this one here, and I'm not sure what those different icons what those are for again this is brand new to us on this particular model but i'm sure they have different temperatures for different positions oh, it's moving and then the glue stick i only put the glue stick there on the very center of that build plate because i figured that's what it's going to do if you pop back up here <clears throat> oh, that's your nozzle temperature here. That's your build plate temperature. Interesting. So there you go. It's running filament out there. Can't tell what it's doing just yet. Still bringing the nozzle temperature up. Yeah, the nozzle temperature there is is uh, that that top number there, that 245 now. It's probably close to starting to print now because it's it's not no longer red; it's white. Yeah. Now I'm going to see if I can zoom in on that a little bit, see what it's doing. I can't really tell. Yeah. Well, I see some green filament coming out of the nozzle over here. If you look all the way back, see where the print head is? It says Bamboo Lab. There you go. It just cleaned off the nozzle. So here in a minute, I expect it to come out here to the center and start printing. Out there, it's moving the head in the, the bed, bed into position. Yep. Oh, this is cool. There, it's cleaning. It was maybe that was cleaning the nozzle there. Never watched one of these print before. Sorry if it seems a little shaky. I'm holding it by hand. see what it's doing. I don't know if it's the lighting or just not enough filament down yet. Alrighty, well we'll let it do a little bit of work and we'll come back. Oh, whoa, I'm just zoom forward. Well, again, it's going to print in the center of the bed, so my guess is it's getting ready to do first layer it's, at this okay, point. Still testing the bed height okay wow so it's it well it's probably going to do an yeah it's an auto bed leveling ah okay it, it's got to do an auto bed level and okay. it's going to do a check all right hmm. didn't think about it go through all this while we were trying to get it started so we've never played with one of these before, so this is all new to us. So you can see this particular unit. Oh, see what it's doing up here? See how now this is in white? So before the uh, cleaning nozzle, that was see this was this was white when it was heating things up. Yeah. Then this was white, now auto bed leveling, so that tells you what step it's on. Yeah. All right. And then it'll calibrate extrusion, and yeah. then after it does that, it'll actually print it. Okay. And all of those steps is going to help to ensure that you don't, it helps to ensure you don't have a print failure. Okay. Which, if you have a print failure, obviously you've wasted filament and you've wasted time trying to get your product printed. That's, it's doing bed leveling. Yeah. It, 
pulses each location like three times. Yeah. All right. So each row on this bed, it does six different points on the bed and it does it three times at each point to make sure that the bed is actually level. Okay. Wow, yeah, I see what it's doing now. Okay. And it does four or five of those on each half of the bed, so it does at least eight of those across that bed. I didn't count them a while ago. Making different sounds. Kind of reminds me of a vacuum on our food vacuum thing. Well, what's interesting, I, I read some a little bit about this. It actually determines, based upon your setup, it determines what vib what frequency of vibration your machine is sensitive to. So what it does is it, it works to cancel that out so that it, you don't want it vibrating while it's trying to lay down these, these layers on the 3D print. Right. Okay, I think it's actually laying down stuff now. See the green across the front? Yeah. That wasn't there a while ago. You're right, it was not. doing a calibrating extrusion. If you come back up here to the... Okay, it's on the last step now. Yep. Okay. Wow. This machine is a lot more sophisticated than some of the other machines. I'm trying to block some of the reflection in the glass. Sorry guys, I hope I, <laughs> I'm doing that well for you. Because I noticed there's a lot of reflection from our stuff behind me. So, um, don't think we'll sit here and wait for it to do the whole thing on our video. We'll uh, let it go for a while and then maybe record a little bit more and then come back when it's finished. Yeah. How's that? All right, see you in a few minutes. There's noticeable vibration in the table that that, that uh, 3D printer is sitting on. So we did have we do have some anti vibration feet that we will probably get and uh, we'll get those put on there and hopefully that will help with that. Okay, so the print has been finished. Let it cool down. I started pulling this up and realized I need to video this. Just using, this is just like a cake decoration uh, spatula here. And all I did was get that underneath that filament and that filament pulled right up off of that build plate. We might mention it's been like an hour since we finished because we had to go pick up our dogs from doggy daycare. Yeah. Yeah. So this thing is completely cooled down. Yeah, so you can see if you, if I don't know if you can see that or not. All right, we're good. But, um, Just get that underneath there like that, and it comes right up. It just pulls yep. right up like that. Yep. And then back here on our, this is our benchy. I and pushed it, came it right off. and it came it came right <laughs> off just it, perfect. It may be because it was so, uh, instead of a hot bed, it was yeah. a cold bed. Yeah, now I, I do want to show you the quality of that product there. Yeah, even with all the jiggling and stuff it was doing. Yeah, it that's, that's an still absolutely... Awesome. Absolutely beautiful product there. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can, when you feel it, you can it, feel the lines. There's a very small line there, but quite frankly, that could be part of the design. Yeah, or it could just be because our bed was so jiggly because we didn't have yeah. the anti-vibration. Yeah, and that has the it. person's name that did the, did the design. But again, this is the Benchy that was built into this uh, software here to control it. Pretty cool. So overall extremely happy with the quality of that uh we we had i had more problem uh getting the screws out in the right order and, <laughs> and getting knowing when to put the ams on there than i did actually doing the print and stuff so 
and what was interesting was is where this was at I put some glue stick here on this build plate. I put it out here in the middle. It printed this over here, so there was actually absolutely no glue on there, but guess what? It came out absolutely perfect. I couldn't ask for any any better than that right there. Yeah, for a first print, not knowing what we're doing. So, I, would, anyway. <laughs> I think it came out great. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, with that, I'll say... Uh, uh, thank you for watching our channel today. This is, again, Greg with The Oily Crafter. My wife, Judy, is behind the camera. Uh, we appreciate you taking your time to watch this today. If you uh, have any questions for us, please feel, or comments, please feel free to list that down below. And we, we ask that if you like the content, to please like and subscribe to our channel. And, again, uh, post any questions or feedback that you might have for us. Um, we are the Oily Crafter, and we appreciate you today. Thank you for watching.